Hello friends, I am greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB Foundation Level Certification. We are in chapter 4 talking about test analysis and design and today we are continuing with our next segment that is 4.3 white box test techniques. And as part of this we will be talking about the first technique under this category that is statement testing and statement coverage. Before we talk about anything in particular about these techniques standalone, let us talk quickly with a recap of what is white box test technique. So these category or this category consists of those techniques which are generally useful when it comes to the code level specific testing. So mainly when it comes to unit testing, widely the developers make use of these techniques to reduce their number of test cases. Of course, the objective exactly remains the same. The objective of the technique is to reduce and write minimum and efficient test cases, but at the same time, having the desired full coverage, what they need in order to test this. At this point of time, we should know that someone who is learning about this should have some basic knowledge of coding, programming, etc. However, <clears throat> we have it at K2 level, where K2 certainly means you just have to understand it. You don't have to apply. Okay, the syllabus has been revised and the revisions have already stated right from 2018 that these two topics will be at K2. You will not be asked to apply and derive the test cases. Okay, so here you just have to learn and understand that what is statement testing, what is statement coverage, and at the same time, you will have to learn about what this is all about. Okay, in order to answer that definition, you will have to go through the technique, but I will be doing that. Of course, without that, you cannot understand what is the technique all about, but do not get misguided that you will be asked to derive the number of test cases. No, you will not be. Making it very clear right in the beginning and getting started with our very first technique called as statement testing. So let's quickly look what the syllabus is talking about. The syllabus says, because of their popularity and simplicity, this section focuses on two code related white box test techniques. However, there are many other which we will learn in the advanced level. But at this point in the foundation, these are the most commonly used techniques that is statement testing and branch testing. So let's have a look here, the statement and branch testing. They are more rigorous techniques that are used in some safety critical, mission critical, or high integrity environments to achieve more thorough code coverages. However, today in this tutorial, we are covering only the statement testing part, and next tutorial will be covering the branch testing. So let's concentrate only on the first part today, and the other will be discussed in our next tutorial. So statement testing is the technique to derive the minimum number of tests to measure the statements in a fragment of code, whereas statement coverage is a metric to measure the coverage achieved by the test. Many people get misguided or misunderstand that statement testing and statement coverage are synonyms. Now, let me make it very clear. Statement testing is the technique to find out the minimum number of test cases to test 100% statement coverage for a given fragment of code. In fact, that what I just said is the definition of statement testing. Whereas statement coverage is a measure that how much coverage we have actually achieved. So let me tell you, there are two situations. Okay, two, not four. Okay, two situations. One, you can derive minimum number of test cases using the technique statement testing, and you will already have the minimum which covers 100% statement. But in case you have not used the technique, and you have randomly written some test cases and you would like to measure that did we really achieve 100% coverage using these test cases what we have written then we make use of statement coverage that means you don't use both at any point of time together you use either statement testing to get the minimum number of test cases for 100% coverage or if you have not used this technique then you have randomly written test cases then you use statement coverage to find out did we really achieve 100% coverage or we have to write more Okay, so these two are just two different things which works on the same way that is for same code but from two different points of view. So you will use any one at any point of time because the situation can be only one at any point of time. Okay, so let's practically get into this and try to understand what is statement testing and how do we measure statement coverage. So the very first thing I'm taking here is a very simple example. However, it may look like a very hypothetical code. So yes, it, this is a pseudo code. Okay. It's not something which you can claim that, Hey, there's a syntax missing. There's a semicolon missing. Come on. We are talking about any programming language right now. We're just talking about a pseudo code. 
And the code is very simple and straightforward, kept in a way that everyone can learn and understand about it. It says read A, read B. That means there are two parameters, two variables, and I'm conducting a check of if that is, if A is greater than B, then print A is bigger, else print B is bigger and end if. Now, a simple condition check whether A is greater than B. If it is true, it will print A is bigger. If in case it is false, it will print B is bigger. And right on the right hand side, you have a pictorial representation of this in a flowchart format. Again, I'm not following the syntax of shape and size when it comes to uh, the diagram of flowchart. But however, we just wanted to present it that this is just about a flow charting, right? So we have the pictorial representation of same thing, but at the same time, we learn about that what the you know, flow chart consists of. So the two major components of a flow chart is basically the statement and branches, okay? So statement is basically these blank notes. That is the black part of the flow part flow chart where you have the notes like A and B, which is the two different variables, reading them before it gets into the condition. Then condition is A greater than B. Then there are printing nodes that is print A, print B. But of course, when it is true, then it will print A. When it is false, it will print B. However, the branches or mainly the decisions when are made at the condition that is true and false, they are called as branches. So we, they just branch from there, right? I, you know, just logical understanding of the word branch. So generally the true and false path, what we have coming out from the condition is what you call it as branch. However, in any such situations, you can just say that, hey, it's an output from a condition or output from a node, then it is also a branch. So put together, the branch is the other part of it. However, in this technique, we are just limited to statement testing. So let's concentrate only on the statement that is the black part. Now, what is the statement testing defined as? So statement testing is basically to find out the minimum number of test cases to cover 100% statement in the given code. That means in this picture pictorial representation, I must cover all the statements with minimum number of test cases. So let's do it practically and try to understand how this works. So right here, I have a quick a representation of the same thing. So I would have to take uh, two paths minimum. Now, what is a path? A path is an executable path which reaches the end of the code starting from the start point. So right from the top to the bottom, you have to reach and follow the path in terms of execution. So if you see, I followed one true path, first of all, we always try with the valid test case first. So we took the one, which is our true path. So I'm going to read the variable A is greater than B, consider that it is true, then print A and if that is close of the program. So I covered the maximum number of statements here. However, B, which is also a statement is getting missed out. So I will take one more path following the false way that is false part of it and executing it to get to the end. So I need minimum two paths, which in turn will be my test cases to cover 100% statement in this given fragment of code. I hope that absolutely makes sense. But if in case you did not still understand it, feed the value and make it more practical. So say for example, in test one, I'm taking A as 20 and B as 10. You know the true path will be executed because A is greater than B. In test case two, I'm taking A as 10 and B as 20. False path will be executed and there is a print path, print statement right there. So in that context, both all the statements should be covered with minimum number of test cases. So answer is you need at least two test cases to cover all the statements in the given fragment of code. However, many people say that, okay, that's one thing. What about any other case? So let me take one more example without else. And that would give you better sense of what is exactly statement testing is. Look at this now. I have a simple fragment of code right here. And this reads it as read A. There's only one variable. If A is greater than zero, then get into another if, which is the second condition. So this is what we call it as nested if, where one if is within another if. Okay, so when we have two ifs combined together within each other, you call it as nested if. So in this case, if you see A is greater than zero, if that is true, then check that if A is also equal to 21. And if that is also true, then print the key. Okay, then print the key. So both the conditions should be fulfilled in order to print the key. Otherwise, I don't want you to do anything. That means I'm not requesting program to do anything on the else statement. And that's completely on me. 
So in that context, if you look at the diagram, the diagram clearly says that I will go with read the parameter A, then check for the first condition. If it is true, get into the second condition. If it is false, it will just exit. Same way, if the second condition is false, it will exit. But if it is true, it will print the key and then it will exit. So now the question is, what is the minimum number of test cases to get to the 100% statement coverage? And right here, if you look at it, this is what the one path I will need. Many people will think of two, three and so on. No, that's decision. Okay. You have to find out minimum number of test case or minimum number of path which covers 100% statement. So in this case, if I just follow A is equal to 21, A is equal to 21, this will cover everything in one test itself. That means it'll go via this particular path. That is read A, A greater than zero, true. It'll get into A is equal to 21 and print the key and then exit. And just one test can cover 100% statement coverage. However, many people will have many questions in their mind thinking of there are many other things which can be done here. So for that, please hold on. We have another technique called as branch testing and we'll talk about that in this. So rest of your queries will be cleared when you cover the branch test. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.